intellect distinguishes between the possible and the impossible. Reason distinguishes between the sensible and the senseless. Even the possible can be senseless. Those who say that the study of science makes a man an atheist must be rather silly people. Science is not formal logic. It needs the free play of the mind in as great a degree as any other creative art. It is true that this is a gift which can hardly be taught, but its growth can be encouraged in those who already possess it. All attempts to adapt our ethical code to our situation in the technological age have failed. My advice to those who wish to learn the art of scientific prophecy is not to rely on abstract reason, but to decipher the secret language of nature from nature's documents, the facts of experience. To present a scientific subject in an attractive and stimulating manner is an artistic task similar to that of a novelist or even a dramatic writer. The same holds for writing textbooks. No language which lends itself to visualizability can describe quantum jumps. We, the Adam and I, have been on friendly terms until recently. I saw in it the key to the deepest secrets of nature, and it revealed to me the greatness of creation and the Creator. I believe that ideas such as absolute certitude, absolute exactness, final truth, etc., are figments of the imagination, which should not be admissible in any field of science. This loosening of thinking seems to me to be the greatest blessing which modern science has given to us. For the belief in a single truth and in being the possessor thereof is the root cause of all evil in the world. For all the communities available to us, there is not one I would want to devote myself to, except for the Society of the True Searchers, which has very few living members at any time. I believe there is no philosophical highroad in science with epistemological signposts. No, we are in a jungle and find our way by trial and error, building our road behind us as we proceed. We do not find signposts at crossroads, but our own scouts erect them to help the rest. In practical affairs, particularly in politics, men are needed who combine human experience and interest in human relations with a knowledge of science and technology. It is true that many scientists are not philosophically minded and have hitherto shown much skill and ingenuity, but little wisdom. There are two objectionable types of believers, those who believe the far-fetched and those who believe that belief must be discarded and replaced by the scientific method. Between these two extremes, there is enough scope for believing the reasonable and reasoning on sound beliefs. We need to make a world in which fewer children are born and which we take better care of them. Einstein would be one of the greatest theoretical physicists of all time, even if he had not written a single line on relativity. 
The continuity of our science has not been affected by all these turbulent happenings, as the older theories have always been included as limiting cases in the new ones. I have tried to read philosophers of all ages and have found many illuminating ideas, but no steady progress toward deeper knowledge and understanding. Science, however, gives me the feeling of steady progress. I am convinced that theoretical physics is actual philosophy. It has revolutionized fundamental concepts about space and time causality, and about substance and matter, and it has taught us new methods of thinking which are applicable far beyond physics. We have sought for firm ground and found none. The deeper we penetrate, the more restless becomes the universe. All is rushing about and vibrating in a wild dance. If alpha, the fine structure constant, were bigger than it really is, we should not be able to distinguish matter from ether, and our task to disentangle the natural laws would be hopelessly difficult. The fact, however, that alpha has just its value at 1 137th is certainly no chance but itself a law of nature. It is clear that the explanation of this number must be the central problem of natural philosophy. The dance of atoms, electrons, and nuclei, which in all its fury is subject to God's eternal laws, has been entangled with. The scientists urge to investigate like the faith of the devout or the inspiration of the artist, is an expression of mankind's longing for something fixed, something at rest in the universal world, God, beauty, truth. If God has made the world a perfect mechanism, he has at least conceded so much to our imperfect intellect that in order to predict little parts of it, we need not solve innumerable differential equations, but can use dice with fair success.